This is Connect Radio, and every Monday at this time, well, I say at this time, sometimes it's 8.30, sometimes it's 8.35. No fault of Chris's, it's me, you see. I'm not very good at timekeeping. But we have a look at our feature, Digging in the Dirt. And if you don't know, if you've never experienced an episode of this before, then you can go back and watch them on our YouTube channel, which hopefully you've subscribed to, Chris, by now. Oh, I mean, I'm I'm barely ever off it. I mean, I'm just watching it constantly. Excellent. Excellent. Over and over again. Watching himself, ladies and gentlemen. How very shy. I'm all amused. <laughs> so this, honestly, we absolutely love this because we learned so much. Like last week, we were talking about the arrowheads, weren't we? And how just because something looks old doesn't necessarily mean it is. I mean, take Chris, for example. He's only 32. <laughs> and take me. I'm only 18. <laughs> Clearly, I had a very, very long paper round over a few fields. So, and um, Chris actually, and you will see this on the video when we put it up online. He's at home. He's got the Christmas tree up and everything. And you and yours, your wife have been struggling with illness and infections and all kind of stuff, haven't you as well? Oh, it's a nasty bug that's going around. Yeah, I think it looks like we're all going to get it at some point. So, uh, yeah, I, I was down over the weekend, but I think I'm okay today. Get it over before Christmas. That's what you need to do. Yes, I've had too many times when it's hit me just over, just when I go on holiday, you know, when I have a break, that's when these things hit us. So I'm quite happy to have it earlier. There's just nothing worse than when you've got family around for some sort of occasion, you're upstairs and you're really, really ill. And you can smell the food cooking and stuff like that. It just makes oh, you feel worse. <laughs> so, Chris, um, have you got this artifact with you at home? What are we doing this morning? Yeah, yeah, I've got I've got one at home. And uh, okay, I am going to say this is not life size, right? What I'm about to okay. show you is not life size. But Gareth, I don't know if you want to describe uh, what I'm what I'm showing. It's pretty impressive, actually, uh, with the Christmas tree behind me. <laughs> it looks even more impressive. So Chris is holding up a model of Hogwarts from Harry Potter. There, um, he's he's holding up. Now that looks like something I could three D print. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, what? this was a. A 3D model, you're right, uh, yeah. constructed together. And this is a very, very important, uh, can I say object? It's architecture, really. Uh, a very important building, anyway, uh, from the Bible. So, let me just explain. We've got almost two sections, and what you've got is a wall around it. You've got six. Are they turrets, Chris? Are they towers? What would you call them on each corner and the uh, sides? Call, call them towers. Yeah, call okay, them towers. towers. And then you've got one big tower... Um, to the right hand side of it and you've got almost sort of floor space i'm not doing very well really this week that's not bad i don't think that's too bad at all so it yeah. it's almost it it looks like something very grand and it looks like something that would be on show in that big building to the right hand side so it's almost like something that would be presented in there maybe an important artifact is stored in there that's what I'm thinking. It, it's is that right? I, th I think I think you've given a lot of clues there. Actually, I re I reckon the uh, listeners, without seeing it, will have a pretty good <laughs> opportunity so, to guess what this is. I would love you to get in touch right now and have a go at guessing what I've just described. I don't know. I'm as clueless as you are, I suppose, but I can at least see it. The WhatsApp number that you need is 0161 511 5. That's 0161 511 5. Send through on WhatsApp. Let us know what you think it is, and we'll find out exactly what it is in a moment with Chris. So I think I've done quite well, really, of describing this. You know, radio theatre of the mind and all that. So um, if we have a look on WhatsApp, um, a message in from Paul, and Paul says it's clearly some sort of worship area or it's clearly some sort of maybe temple and it's something that was designed to keep something precious. A lot of something's going on there, by the way. Um, so if you missed it, basically, Chris has got a 3D model of a building, a famous building. Now, if you were to see this, I imagine a lot of people would guess what that is but well i certainly don't know what it is but i'm trying to describe what it was so chris am i and are paul anywhere near when we say that it's a temple and it's almost to showcase some important artifact which seems to be kept there 
Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, this is great. So, um, those who are watching uh, later on will see that it's it's a model, three D printed. You're right. And uh, I bought this in Israel actually, and uh, it's a flat pack, so I could assemble it with my uh, son at home, which was fun when I came back from one of my trips. And it's a reconstruction of what we think the temple looked like at the time of Jesus. So it's a temple from the time of King Herod and so on, who had the the temple rebuilt. And um, Fantastic gift, by the way. Just thinking of all the Christmas stuff. Our Moreland's College merch department, which supplies me with the clothing I wear. Uh, they ought to get onto one of these temples as well, because fantastic bit of merch. But the um, the temple itself, just to say, from the point of view of archaeology, uh, this is such an amazing location. Now, it's gone. It's been destroyed. But that doesn't mean that archaeology can't tell us a lot about it. And, and this model of the temple, you're totally right. It's stored something significant. It's got two sections. Uh, open sort of courtyard where sacrifices were offered and then you go through to the holy place this larger tower as you called it and there's a holy of holies in there where once a year on the day of atonement blood was shed at the location where the ark of the covenant was stored i didn't even remember gareth but way back when we started this series the ark of the covenant was the first thing we looked at because it's got the great indiana jones connection uh, with the raiders of the lost ark so this was right at the center of Jewish Israelite worship of God. And in 70 AD, so that's after Jesus had been crucified and risen from the dead. After that, the temple was destroyed, completely flattened by the Romans. And so we now know what the temple looked like because we have descriptions from the ancient world. Uh, we've even got descriptions in the Bible as well, in the Gospels. And there is some archaeology done as well that helps us understand the, the location of the temple. Do you know, uh, Gareth, archaeology can be very dangerous for lots of reasons. Uh, rock falls, uh, hidden, well, I was going to say hidden traps. That's probably not so often, but you never know. Uh, but also, the authorities today who run the place where this was once built, it's a whole location in Jerusalem, they don't permit archaeology. Archaeology is forbidden. So even if you walk around the, the, the square where this once stood uh, with a book on archaeology, you can get into trouble with the authorities that run the place. They don't want people doing archaeology. However, they did some rebuilding work there to build a new building and they did a load of uh, uh, excavation just with earth movers and dumped all the rubble. And for the last 15 years, that rubble has been sifted through a sieve to find what's been left behind. So in other words, archeologists found all the rubbish and the rubble that was from where this once stood. They sifted it through like a sieve and they've put together the pieces they found. And Gareth, they found the floor tiles, beautiful floor tiles that were in use at the time of Jesus from this temple. You can Google them and see them online, but they're beautiful uh, floor tiles that once would have been the actual beautiful marble kind of flooring that was walked on by the priests at the time of Jesus. So gradually we're building a picture of what this looked like more and more where the Ark of the Covenant once stood and where sacrifices were offered and where Jesus once ministered. And as we head towards Christmas, uh, let's just just remind ourselves that Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter two, that if you destroy this temple, Jesus said, I'll raise it again in three days. And John, who wrote that down in the Bible, said he wasn't talking about a building. He was talking about his own body. See, in the end, that is just a building, beautiful as it was. And it was destroyed, like I say, nearly 2000 years ago. It's gone. But Jesus said his own body is like a temple, but it's even better because through Jesus, we can know God as our best friend ever. And even if you destroy the body of Jesus, which they tried to do, he said I'd he'd raise it again in three days. And that's the resurrection of Jesus, right? He was crucified, died, buried, but three days later came back to life. And unlike that temple model I showed you, which is now ancient history, it's in the dust. The body of Jesus raised from the dead is still with us here today. So Gareth, I love archaeology and I love history, but I love today even more. And what Jesus is doing today, it's like the temple, but on steroids. It's even better because it's bringing men and women from around the world to a personal friendship with God. And is this so, when I watched your film, you yeah. met a man who was sieving through dirt. Is that yeah. what they were discovering, what you held up? That's right. 
That man that I was talking to, Gabriel Barkai, he's the archaeologist who originally had the idea to sift the rubbish. Wow. And he's been doing that all these years. Uh, because when they dumped it, the authorities dumped it in a valley. They just thought that was it. It would just be um, washed away in the rain and forgotten. But he had the idea to gather it all together and start sifting it. And they've been doing it for years now and found loads of really interesting artefacts. So that, that model you were holding up, Chris, roughly how, how accurate would that be? So they found the floor. They'll have found where the walls start, presumably. But how do they know that what you're holding up there is what it would have actually looked like? How, how, how close is it, I guess? Yeah, I mean, we've, we can't be 100% sure, but we do know something of the right dimensions. We've got dimensions that are given in the Bible as well. And we can walk around the location where it once stood. And we can see little marks, if you like, that do suggest that the basic size and shape is right. Now, there is a fantastic description of the temple from a Jew from the first century called Josephus. And that Jew from the first century, 2000 years ago, he gave us pretty good descriptions. So if we put the ancient books together with the archaeology and even with a few hints in the Bible itself, and of course the dimensions from the Old Testament, put it all together, and that's probably the best guess we can have. Uh, it, it might be, you know, there are a few things about it that might not be absolutely accurate. We have to guess a little bit about when windows and doors might have been, but the dimensions are, are pretty secure. Truly amazing, Chris. Thank you so much for sharing that. I wonder how many artifacts you've actually got in your house because you've never ever gone on a week and gone there well actually um haven't got anything to talk about there's always an artifact somewhere if not at your college at your home i've got quite a few <laughs> some are replicas some are originals and of course also i'm always trying to find new ones as well so um you know the, <laughs> there's all sorts of possibilities for things i don't even know about yet that i might be showing you on the show and and gareth you know the thing is like teaching theology and teaching bible there's nothing like using visual and touch. You know, I could talk and talk, as you know, but we, all of us, really, we like to be able to see things and hear sounds and touch and get the feel for it. And, uh, and that's why one of my favourite places to teach Bible is in Israel itself, you know. Uh, if you've not been out to Israel, it's a fantastic place just to go and tour and explore and see the sites. Uh, one of the early church theologians he said the land of the Bible, Israel, is like the fifth gospel. So the gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. We've got those in the Bible. And he said the fifth gospel is the land of Israel itself, which brings all these things to life. And maybe this has tickled your fancy to learn. It's practical learning. In fact, the phrase is equipping people passionate about Jesus Christ to impact the church and the world. That's what Moreland's College do. And you can find out everything you need to by heading over to their website. It's moreland.ac.uk. You can find them on the socials. You can have a look at what courses are available, both full-time and part-time. And remote learning is possible. I'm not sure if we're allowed to say that yet, but eventually... Yeah. It will it's be. on the way. <laughs> Something big is coming. Chris this is, is giving away. And that Let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> I will it's actually great. It until, well, until next year now. Um, so thank you very, very much for being a part of the show this year. And have a very Merry Christmas to you and your family and yeah. to everybody at Moreland's. And we'll have you back on. I've just been looking at the timetable, actually. We'll have you back on on the 8th. Oh, sorry, no. On the 9th of December is when you'll be back with us. No, so, January. January. Sorry, <laughs> January. Oh, oh, the 9th of January. That was time travel. That was last week. 23 is when you're going to be with us. Thank you very much, Chris, and love to you all. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year, Gareth, and to the listeners. Thank you.